uh, tuned in to the Keith Allen Show. Thank you for joining me, if you are. I'm sitting here with my guest, Pepe. Is it this Pepe? I keep calling you Pepe, but you, Joseph is your first name. Well, Pepe or Joseph, same thing. Even Pepito would do. Pepito, oh my God, that uh, sounds too familiar. I've heard okay. something about that name before. <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, I, I say Pepe a lot, but Joseph Arcega, that's it. Right. Okay, you were producing and writing? Yes, uh, I began my career as a writer uh, back in 1950. Uh, I came from Mexico City. I uh, was able to learn the language uh, sufficiently well to write in English, and uh, it led me to publications such as the Los Angeles Times. <clears throat> the Herald Examiner, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, here I am writing plays. Uh, but this is not the first play I've written. I've written two others, which were uh, produced by the Scorpio Rising Theater, by the uh, Plaza de la Raza uh, company. And uh, at that time, I founded the Barrio Players Foundation. So three years ago, I ran a, I saw a picture of, of Lupe Velas in a special edition of Life magazine. It was called Legends of the 1940s and 50s. And that led me into thinking that perhaps there was a, a play in it. And I began to do research and more research. And eventually I, I came up with, uh, with a good story. And I brought my friends and players and members of the uh, cast here. Right, because I'm sure I want I, yeah, we attended a reading once before with these and I really enjoyed it. Well, it was really interesting. I'm very glad to be a part of watching this inside stuff, you know. <laughs> it's, not everybody gets a chance to do that, I'm sure. Well, this is the first time that a play has been written about a Latino woman who did such magnificent job having come from Mexico City, having broken all expectations and wound up as the most loved female comedian in the history of uh, Latin America, Lupe Velas. Right, I, you know what, I did see a picture of her somewhere around here. I had on yes, my desk. Yes, uh, as a matter of fact, I got me? a picture over there. Uh, right, the picture, that was supposed to be, uh, I saw it on my desk here uh, of Lupe Velas. Yes. I'd like to show, maybe if we can. Maybe we'll of, pick course, it, uh, of course, of course. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. You bring it on over here. She, we'll take she a was at. a very pretty girl. Yes. I met her, of course, uh, in the <laughs> 1940s. And, uh, Oh, you um, met a person? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I used to cover fights at the old Hollywood Legion Stadium, and she was always sitting right behind me. And every time a Mexican fighter scored well, she would get up and cheer him. Mata, lo pegan en la panza, and all that kind of thing. You know, it was, it was very exciting. Wow. There she is. Yeah, this is Lupe Valdez. Huh? I was very interested in this story. I mean, it sounded so exciting, because she was dating Gary Cooper for four years, I understand, something like that? Yes, yes, he was very anxious to uh, to marry Gary Cooper, but Gary Cooper, for some unforgiven reason, decided not to. Possibly influenced by her, mo by his mother, mother? Mm -hmm. possibly, who knows? Mm -hmm. But um, she did not marry him, uh, but she went on to attain more success and more success, and uh, there came a time when uh, Lupe, fell in love with another American giant, Johnny Weissmuller. They were married. Johnny Weissmuller, not to interrupt, Johnny Weissmuller is, uh, is the one from Tarzan, right? Exactly. exactly. He was Olympic swimming champion in 1932. And some time ago, all of a sudden, she, Ramon Novarro, Dolores del Rio were accused as being communist sympathizer. And that was a terrible lie naturally, because Lupe being so so much a Catholic, why would she mix with communists? It doesn't make any sense. And anyway, I brought some of these fine right. performers. Yes, yes, I'm looking forward to this. And uh, <laughs> uh, could I have them on now? Uh, or, uh, yeah, well, we're, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, I'm going to have... Uh, Karen Ironside is going to be. She's going to open up and do the introduction of the, of the of what's going on with the play, right? Wonderful. Okay, Wonderful. so um, we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we're going to have that for you right after this. Jobs telling people to buckle up. Yeah, it seems just like yesterday. Buckle up, baby. Buckle up. 
Next. To buckle or not to buckle? Next. The band, the band. Next. We are never going to find a safety belt spokesperson. <gasps> Let's get buckled! <laughs> Yeah, we've helped save thousands of lives. But some people still don't buckle up. So let's hit it! You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt. Okay, we're back. I'm back here with Karen Ironside, right? Yeah. And you are going to do the introduction yes. of the I, Lupe Valdez, he, Gary Cooper, the untold story, right? Right. I'm playing Helen Hayes. Oh, you are? Yes. And Helen Hayes is a part... Where did she come in with this? She was good friends with Lupe Valdez, and she had an association with Gary Cooper, possibly an affair with him, and... Um, so, once Luffy met um, Helen Hayes, he became good friends, and Gary Cooper was, was their liaison, so to speak. I understand. Okay, yeah, it's, uh, it's probably, yeah, I bet you, yeah, I understand. They're probably lip-reading us right now because the mics are over here. Uh, let me, yeah, give me, let me have that mic over here. Excuse me, if you're right back. Okay, so these things, these things do happen. We are live today, and we'll be airing later on tonight at 8 p.m. Okay, like we were saying, Karen Ironside is here. She's going to be doing the introduction, and uh, she is playing? Helen Hayes. Helen Hayes, wh who is, or which is? She, she was good friends with Lupe Velez and had an affiliation with Gary Cooper, and that's how they, Lupe and Helen Hayes met each other. And Helen Hayes narrates the play and has a few scenes with Lupe and Gary in the play. Okay, now this is just a little bit, and this is the introduction. I'm going to let Karen go ahead and, and, and introduce. Two things at once. Yeah, right. <laughs> Imagine that, and I'll be right over here. Okay. okay? Okay. Hello. Hi. I'm, I'm an actress and my name's Helen Hayes. Three years ago, Life Magazine published a special issue titled Screen Legends of the Past. There on page 42, the picture of a dear friend and intimate, Lupe Velez, appeared. We first met at Metro Goldwyn Studios at the beginning of a sensational career. Loved by moviegoers in America and in the Spanish-speaking countries, Lupe had come to Hollywood in search of success. What she accomplished was phenomenal. She had come wearing a crown, a crown which pro pro proclaimed her queen of burlesque, Mexico City, a city of antiquity, one which I came to love and respect. Lupe's story begins as she stands outside L.A.'s Union Station on arrival in Los Angeles. She crosses historic Olvera Street Park, enters the 200-year-old Plaza Church, then waits for the arrival of rector Father Olivo, his office. That's, that's the whole introduction, right? Yeah. Okay, great. Thank okay, you. well, that was Karen Ironside with the introduction of the I. Lupe. Oh, wait, let me see. Where, where right is here. it? I. Lupe <laughs> Valez, he, Gary Cooper, the untold story. And I'm going to take a short break, and when uh, we come back, we'll be uh, going to the uh, second uh, reading uh, right after this. He protects all living things in the forest. But he can't do it alone. Please don't play with matches. Put out your campfires. And never, ever forget the words of Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent forest fires. Hey, welcome back. Okay, uh, with me right now, I have a couple of more readers from the Ivalez, He, Gary Cooper, The Untold Story. They're going to do... Uh, uh, little reading right from the play it, uh, with me is uh, well, I'm sorry I don't need to forget the names Christina Morales uh, and uh, also do I have a, a resume on you or in? no Israel Asumante As okay they both are gonna be doing a, a reading of what part is this um, I'm gonna be reading Lupe okay. and he's going to be reading okay well I'll let you guys get to it how do you do, Miss Valet? I am Father Olivo. Did you have a good trip, I hope? Fine, Father. It was a little long, but, um, you know, three days and three nights sitting up. Ah, uh, yes, that can be very, very tiring. <laughs> Father Mendizabo wrote to me about you, Miss, and he says that you were a very successful performer in vaudeville. Yes, vaudeville. <laughs> I was, thanks to the Lord. <laughs> am I to assume that you're here to seek fame and fortune in American films? Yes, sir. I see. Uh, one thing you should be aware of, miss, that is that thousands upon thousands of young ladies have come to Hollywood with the same purpose. I, I know, Father, 
but an American friend of ours, a former Hollywood actor, tells me that I have something very special to offer. And that is? Well, comedy, sir. I do outrageous comedy. And, you know, my accent being what it is, well, it should make people laugh. I see. Miss Velez, you probably already know that this country is going through a very, very severe depression. Yes, Father, I read about it in the newspapers. Which means, unfortunately, that minorities are the first to suffer. No job to be had, Miss. None. Sir, I am prepared to support myself for one full year. You mentioned the minorities, but, but which? The, the Jews, the Italians, Hungarians, the Chinese? I specifically meant Mexicans, Miss. The shameful way they portray our people. Bandits, servants, lazy, inefficient human beings. When exactly the opposite is true. But, Father, are all the studios this biased? Well, there are exceptions, Miss. People like Cecil B. DeMille, Hart Roach, Henry Rond come to mind. Oh, sir, I happen to have a letter of recommendation for Mr. Roach. Does he not produce comedies like El Gordo, El Flaco, Laurel and Hardy, Jimmy Durante, etc.? So I hear, Miss, but tell me about yourself, the person, the human being. Sir, um, my father was a general in the Mexican army, and when the government began to close churches, even jailing priests, well, he could not take it, and he took sides with the Cristeros. One month after that, he was executed. And I, the rebel that I am, began to sabotage the military facilities right and left. <laughs> that was very admirable, miss. Very, uh, what happened next? Well, sir, we had to leave town immediately. We settled in San Antonio, Texas, and mother stuck me in a convent. A convent? Why? Well, I happen to be a wild, impulsive female. One who loves everything around me. One who... Uh, please forgive me. Uh, one who loves the male species. Go on. And so when I went to the singing recital at St. Paul's Monastery in San Antonio, I made eyes with Brother Edward. What? <laughs> yes, Father, I... Is there anything that I can do to rid myself of these demons that come to me night after night? First, tell me something. Are you still a virgin? And, and please, be honest. It's important. Uh, Father, even though I crave and I crave the flesh of a man, I have remained clean and untouched. But for how long I can go on, I don't know. The only thing that one can do, and you can do this, to press hard, real hard, against your crutch, and push, 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 when sexual desires are about to blow your brains out. <laughs> I have done it, and so will you. The Lord will come and give you comfort, believe me. Okay, sir, bless you, thank you. That's it, Ta -da. Ta -da. Cristina Morales and Israel Asumante, right? Asumante. All right. Well, that was very intense. <laughs> I really enjoyed that. And I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to take a short break, and we'll, when we come back, we're going to do a second reading of the Ivalez, he, Gary Cooper, the untold story, right after this. This is Tito Puente, born Ernest Anthony Puente Jr. in New York City on April 20th, 1923. Okay, now we're going to have a second reading from the I Valez, I Lupe Valez, he Gary Cooper, The Untold Story with Cristina Morales and Ruth Ortiz. And they are going to do a reading for you on the, what is this going to be about. This is the scene in between Lupe and Gary's mother. Mrs. Cooper, and she uh -huh. will be reading Mrs. Cooper, and I will be reading Lupe. Lupe. Okay, <laughs> have at it. 
Well, I have read in the papers that you kept yourself quite busy. Oh, well, yes, Mrs. Cooper. That is the nature of the movie business. Either you work or you don't. Mm, yes, I, I suppose. Anything else you do, Miss Bellis? Charities, et cetera, et cetera? Actually, Miss Cooper, I help out at Father Olivos uh, at the Plaza Church at an El Vero Street. Some of his little orphans, the Mexican orphans, they do need so much help. Of course. And you, Mrs. Cooper, what do you do? Oh, keep house, a little social activity here and there, keeping up with what the newspapers columns have to say about Hollywood. Oh, that. Miss Bellis, don't tell me you don't keep up with what they have to report. <laughs> Mrs. Cooper, I have come to the conclusion that they are nothing but gossipers. In Mexico, we have a name for them. Oh? Yes, we call them embusteros, liars. But isn't that too harsh a term for respect the reporters? Mrs. Cooper, I have read what they said about me, the things that I do, where I go, whom I see, and I could spit in their faces. I see. Oh, Gary tells me that your whole family lives in Mexico City. True, Mrs. Cooper. And don't you find it difficult being all by yourself? No, ma'am, I don't. And do you know why? Because, Gary, your son, provides for me all the company, all the affection a woman wants or needs. As speaking of scary, Miss Bellis, it is my understanding that he's moving in with you, and, and if so, why? <sighs> Mrs. Cooper, that is my business. Perhaps, but what if one of these days you're tired of him and then you decide to get rid of him? Uh, he's not anybody's toy. Mrs. Cooper, just so you'll know, Gary and I expect to be married in December. I love him. I love him, and I'm not going to let anything stand in the way of our happiness. Miss Bellis, let me tell you, I have read on you, and will, with all all you can keep with him from getting hurt, and there's a promise. And speaking of promises, mark this on your calendar. In December of the 12th, Gary and I will walk down the aisle at the Plaza Church and be married. Married, I said. Like hell you will, you miserable Mexican. Ooh, boy. Yeah. Ooh. My God. Tense, tense. Oh, I love the G. <laughs> uh, I love that. God, I can't wait for this to come. What is the projection date anyway on this uh, play? I'm too um, excited to wait on uh, April? Pepe, what, when's this? Uh, the April? The should open uh, in uh, mid-April. Uh, we're negotiating with uh, several theaters, and uh, one of the uh, theaters that we're talking to is the, the Nosotros Theater, and of course the uh, Plaza de la Raza Margo Albert Theater. But several, there are other options, but uh, definitely it will open in, in April. Okay, and great. And you are invited. Yeah, I was here. <laughs> I was wanting to hear. That's what I want to hear. Okay. <laughs> Woo, I'm so excited. Okay, well, this that was uh, Christine Morales and Ruth Ortiz doing a part of uh, the Mrs. Gary, Cooper. Mrs. Cooper and uh, Lupe Valles. Okay. Now I'm going to take another short break, and when we come back, we're going to have another reading from you from the same story right after this. <laughs> Morales and Vern York, right? 
And you, grow, you guys are going to do a reading all together? Uh, what is, uh, set this up for me, what this is going to be about? Well, <laughs> okay. it's, it's, um, I've come over to be with Lupe and um, Gary Cooper, who's, pl Vern is playing oh, Gary he's Cooper. Gary Co this is Gary Cooper over yes. here. He's okay. Great. And um, they're talking about setting up their wedding, and we're talking wedding plans. Okay, good. Unless you have anything to add. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll, we'll see right now. We'll let them get okay. uh, busy, and you'll see for yourselves. Okay. Right. Well, back to business. What's the latest in the Lupe Velez Gary Cooper drama? Helen, yesterday I talked to Father Olivo, and he asked me if we had finally settled on the time. The wedding, I mean. What do you think, Gary? It makes no difference to me. <laughs> no, no, darling. We have to finalize the arrangements. Anyway, I told Father Olivo the wedding would be, you know, held early. In that way, the guests could have plenty of time to go home and dress and get to the church <laughs> before you and I walk down the aisle. <laughs> what do you think? Sounds okay to me. Okay, the reception. Gary, where do you think we should have it? We could have it at Ciro's, Mocambo, the Florentine Gardens. Whatever suits you, Lupe. Hold it. Hold it. Why not have it here? This patio can hold 200 people in there. <gasps> oh, what a marvelous idea. Oh, Helen, we could have everything. We could have everything catered, the food, the drinks, the wedding refreshments. Oh, I even hangover medicine. <laughs> <laughs> Look, as far as I'm concerned, it's all settled. Well? Ellen, I think not. Uh, Lupe, something's come up. <laughs> what? Well, my, my agent says I have to make myself available all through December, and oh, I can't say to him, sorry. <clears throat> Gary, our, our wedding is, is much more important than any agent. Can't you see that? Well, Lupe, it isn't. It isn't just my agent and Metro Golden Studios called and, you know. In what way, Gary? Well, they're, they're, they're talking about a picture to be filmed in, in, in North Africa. I think it's called Bo Jest. I, Lupe, I may get a part, a big part. Oh, okay, so how soon will you know? Well, it's hard to say, Lupe. It could be anywhere from four to six weeks. Darling, listen to me. This is the ceremony, the reception will only take hours, and on the same day, nothing would be disrupted. Well, Lupe, there's, there's, there's something else that, mother. <sighs> what did you say? I, well, yeah, she might be hospitalized any, any day now. You said the same thing two weeks ago. And if she does not go into the hospital, will you then turn around and ho head for North Africa? G Gary, that does not make any sense. Well, I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. <sighs> Gary, you are giving me the runaround. And I, I've just had about enough of it, so will you please just for once make a commitment? For Christ's sakes, you big lug, make a commitment. Look, you, you stay out of this, you hear? Like hell I will. I won't stand to one side and watch what you're doing to her and, and what you've done to others, including me. What are you talking about, Helen? <laughs> Lupe, pay no attention to, to, to gossipers. Gossipers? Me? Everybody in Hollywood knows what's going on between you and that, that good-for-nothing cheap female. So tell Lupe, and if you don't, I will! Carrie, will you please, please tell me what's happening? Lupe, it's, it's, well, it's like this. Weeks ago, I, I met this, this person. We, we dated a couple times. I, well, when I least expected, I, I, I fell in love with her. I'm sorry. <laughs> but Gary, it has been four years, four years of happiness. Has it all just gone down the drain, has it? <sighs> no, 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 it cannot be. Lupe, I, I, look, I can't marry you. Sorry. You, you are nothing but a cheap, cruel gringo. Get out of my sight. Largate, largate.
Oh, great X. It's too convincing, even with. The, are, are you just gonna have the, all these costumes and everything? With yeah, this stuff? I think so. Well, we're yeah, just in so. the uh, in the preliminary stage. This is the very earliest stage that we're we're getting together. We've all just received this copy. Yeah, of the no rehearsal. So you guys are cold turkey stuff. Cold right? turkey. Cold turkey. We're, oh my god. We're taking this step by step, and we're receiving the script later, and we take it uh, one brick at a time to build a house. Man, if these do it that good just from a cold turkey shot, well, I can imagine it's just gonna be fantastic. This is some of the cast uh, from the I Valles, I Lupe Valles, He Gary Cooper, The Untold Story. I'm going to take a short break and we'll be right back after this. Tito's artistic activities have not been confined to the studio on the stage. In recent years, he has appeared in several films. The National Academy of Recording Arts and Sciences honored Tito with his UB Award, a Lifetime Achievement Award, given in recognition of his more than 50 years of contributions to the recording industry. Tito Puente, the king, the legend, is the recipient of four Grammy Awards. The most prestigious award that you can receive from NARIS because it gives you the recognition as a great musician or artist, vocalist or instrumentalist. And this gives our music too a lot of uh, recognition worldwide. I won four Grammys and eight nominations. That took me a long time naturally uh, and I've been working hard at it. <laughs> Puente is among the superstars who earned their plays on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. The Walk of Fame, a Hollywood star. Yeah, I got one there. And uh, it took me 40 years to get that star, man. And you know who I'm next to, who's right next to me? Helen Monroe. That was Tito, Tito Fuentes. I recognized him. Anyway, well, welcome uh, back up here with me, uh, Pepe. And uh, that was uh, the uh, players or the cast that you were watching a little earlier were Vern Urich, Christina Morales, and Karen Ironside, which did a marvelous job up there. Well, they are great performers. And uh, when we uh, open up, uh, which will be in April, uh, I hope that uh, they get the hand that they deserve because they are terrific performers. Mm -hmm. And it was my fortune to have found them. Uh, through phone calls, through uh, the cooperation from nosotros, and uh, because I saw Cristina Morales mm -hmm. perform one night at the Nosotros Theater, uh, was a show uh, written by L Linda Lina Gallegos. Lina Gallegos, and she struck me as being a very extraordinary performer, and I, I, I said to Ruth Ortiz, "Will you send her over, and so I can talk to her?" She came over, and she floored me. She did. <laughs> And this was the Maggie's Madness play that uh, has been on. Uh, uh, Christina, is it, uh, it was, is it done over with now? And yeah, what's going on with it? It is over with. In um, March, they may bring it back. It may be only for producers, but they may open it to the general public as well. Right, because I understand we're you know, trying to make a sitcom out of this, uh, this play, right? Which I would you know, highly recommend this yes, play. Yes, because to it's, it's a well-written play. Right. And, uh, and besides, it's written by a woman. and. Uh, Yes. That should help. Uh, yes, and not movies. only that, but it's because it's a uh, upper Very middle good. class Hispanic family, sure. which ain't you don't see on the networks right now, sure. and which would which we do need to see sure. because I would really like to turn the channel and see sure. that. And sure. I I feel it's a part of my culture on TV, you know, and sure. th that would be great. Yes. And uh, okay, so the projection date that you are looking at right now for your play is sometime in April, right? April, yes. Okay. Uh, maybe the little a little bit because of theater availabilities. We're trying to negotiate with the first stage theater where, by the way, they did a, a short, condensed version of the play. That's the first stage theater on Hollywood, and, I mean, on uh, Franklin and Highland uh, Boulevard. But we're negotiating with four. And whoever gives me the, uh, the, the, the best uh, deal, well, that's where we'll go. That sounds fair. But so, yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to say, that sounds fair, because uh, well, I'm by sure... The way, we are looking Barrio Players is looking for possible associate producers or investors. 
We okay. have we have certain funds available, but we will welcome any investors uh, as far as the play goes. It should run for at least a minimum of, of six weeks. Could could be eight, ten weeks, depending on how the people uh, perceive the play. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, how would they get in contact with uh, you or whoever they need well, to speak with? Let me give phone you number? my phone number. Okay. It's uh, eight one eight seven six six one zero six six. Okay. And this is, will they speak with you? Yes. Is, okay, with me. Yes, Pepe Arcega. Or Jose, Joseph? Joseph, Joseph Pepe Arcega. Arcega. Okay, yeah, because yeah, I keep. Uh, <laughs> all right. And then, okay, what else? Let's see, what else? This is, you gave me this because I'm, this tells a lot about uh, the play, right? Well, yes, it does. Yeah. Uh, I leave it in your hands because who knows? Maybe you'll invite us back for another reading. Most definitely. Of course, all Joseph. Right. Especially. Do you have another reading that he would like to do? There's more we have time for another reading. I don't know. I don't know if they ever if they came well, prepared uh, for any more. I don't. They the just person came, that I, I had in mind did not show up because work, uh, work uh, commitments. Maybe they could get up here and just let their attitudes flow out. Well, I don't know. I'll well, just, we have another I'll scene in play. case you people uh, have time. We'll do it gladly. I don't, could you guys? Okay. Well, well, yeah. We're gonna take a short break and we'll come back. If we have something set up for you guys, you'll see for yourselves. And uh, I'll be right back after this. Tony had some drinks, a few joints, and got into a fatal accident tonight. Only he doesn't know it yet. Drugs make you forget. And if you forget how risky sex can be, you could catch the AIDS virus and not know it for months, even years. AIDS, another way drugs can kill. All right, we're back just tuned in you're late oh i forgot to mention to say hi to javi yeah i almost forgot hey javi how's it going how the kids fine great i was helping javi last night with his alarm and everything he was trying to set it up and congratulations uh, he's uh, gonna be a, a, a father to be sometime in october right well i just had to get that out <laughs> so I, I didn't forget okay so then like i said uh, we're gonna uh, did we work on anything is there anything going on uh, back here with pepe well, Joseph at the Arcega? moment, uh, we're having tonight uh, a, uh, a reading of the finished script. What the scenes that uh, these young people read were not perfectly polished. Uh, oh, yes. uh, but uh, tonight we will have the, uh, the polished version. Uh, and of course, uh, Christina has been uh, marvelous as far as cooperation is concerned. Okay. So we should have it completely ready by tonight. Right. Oh, you know, before I uh, you know, get too selfish and and not talking about the players, you know, I have all their names up here and everything. I, I want to recognize, uh, let the people recognize all the cast members that are here today. I, uh, first of all, it's not in particular, no particular order I have here. I'm just going to grab them. Is that okay with you guys? Yeah. You don't have no problem? Okay. Okay. Well, first of all, you mentioned Cristina Morales. She's here. She is yeah. playing Lupe Valles, right? right? Hey! All right. Yay for Cristina. Well, that, she did a very marvelous job. Let's give up a hand for Cristina. Yes, I think she really deserves that. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, Ruth Ortiz. Ruth Ortiz, <laughs> nice to see you here. Thank you for coming down. Very powerful performance. She also was in Maggie's Madness and did, did an excellent job. For all of you, I hope went to go see it, enjoyed it, because I sure did. If you he, if he didn't, I got to have a talk with you. Uh, we have Vern Urich, who was up here a little while ago, who did a powerful performance of Gary Cooper. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, we have resumes here. I can show you all the pictures, but you did see their faces, I'm sure. Yeah. So, you know, we could we could get close-ups on them. We have uh, Nicole Mitchell, right? Nicole Mitchell is Nicole. Nicole. Yeah. Okay. Nicole. She. I remember she was. Um, Nicole was was Nicole the one that uh, was doing the fill-in readings uh, the, the first yes, time we went down. Exactly. Okay, because exactly. I wasn't too sure. She didn't raise her hand or nothing over there. I didn't know. Okay, there you go. Now I could see you. Israel Asomante, right? Yeah, he was yeah, the yeah. one who was the father, right? Yeah, the priest. The priest? Yeah. Okay, he was playing the priest. We have Vern Yuri. Okay, that's his again. Karen Ironside, who did the introduction. Hey, over here. Okay, and she also you also have a part doing. Uh, she, what is that part you say you have doing again? A what? The part you were playing in the in the play. Uh, you said Helen Hayes. Helen Hayes. Okay. Helen, Hayes. Helen Hayes was of course the, is the first lady of the theater, actually. 
Uh, you probably know that uh, even in New York City, they have a, a theater named after Miss Helen Hayes. As a matter of fact, the Screen Actors Guild suggested that I write the this actress, Helen Hayes, to see if she would do the part. We'll do it. We'll see. Yeah, well, as a matter of fact, yeah, it's like, how do you decide how many characters you're going to put into this thing? I mean, well, it could go on for, you know, I, I would think it would go on forever, uh, I mean, to find out all these people that she knew, and how do you figure out how many cast members to play or to cast well, into this production? Well, uh, Miss uh, Heather Zimmerman, who has been appointed director of the play, could not make it here tonight, but she will have the final decision as to how many characters will be included, but roughly speaking, there will be about uh, seven males and uh, uh, six females, roughly. Okay, and uh, well, th this must be like the immediate surroundings she had during her lifetime then, right? Yes, yes. Right. Um, the play explodes not so much her career as a professional, but uh, her activities in, in Hollywood, and how she was uh, persecuted to, to some extent, and uh, she had she had gone through hell in order to, to reach stardom. Uh, she was an, an uh, admirable woman. And, uh, was, she, was she a comedian also, right? She well, was a comedian actress. Yes, wasn't she? she came from Mexico City as a queen of vaudeville, like, as a comedian. And uh, she couldn't hardly speak English, but when she came over here, she studied like I did, and she, she did everything to become well accepted, and she hit it big. She did about 25 feature films. No Latino, male or female, to this day, has ever done what she did. So that's what it makes it a very interesting. Very interesting. Choice. Exactly. Yes. That's that's what I always look forward to. You know, it's sort of it, it's it builds up the, uh, the my, excitement. My, yeah, my excitement to go see this thing, uh, which is uh, are you projecting there at nosotros or like you said maybe. Or whoever gives you the best bid, right? Well, yeah, whoever gives us the, the, the better deal, because uh, some theaters are already booked, like the Gallery Theater. I stopped to see them this morning, and they're already committed until October. But some theaters are available right now, but who knows two months from now if they will be. Mm -hmm. But uh, in order to uh, get a comment from a certain theater, I will have to come up with a certain cash uh, deposit, and we're in business. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I know uh, one of the... Uh, Somebody in the audience over there had mentioned to, uh, I don't know, say something about the, the person. What was that that you said against the, the uh, one of the glasses over here? You mentioned something about, in the break time, about their talk about, to have them talk a little bit about themselves. Goal, yeah. Oh, yeah, their goals. Right. Uh, is, well, obviously, I think this is their goal right now, right? Why don't okay. we, let me suggest, why don't Solid. you bring Christina Morales, because she, uh, she should uh, She's the main character. Little. Go right. ahead, Christina. Yeah, want, Why don't you join us yeah, here and join uh, me here, right here. And talk Christina. about your past. Yes. <laughs> Christina Morales. That's right. Okay. And let's see. That's right, because you're the main character. You should have been up here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Boy, okay, so let's let uh, the past. Oh, boy, I have your resume around here. So <laughs> oh, I just love looking at these things. So talk about yourself. So tell us well, a little bit. The hardest tell thing them. To do. <laughs> yeah, well, um, maybe where you want to start? Where do I want to start? I was. Born in a hospital in yeah, Ann exactly. Arbor, Michigan, That's right. and um, <laughs> most of us were. From the diapers? Um, okay. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Let's my see. theatrical experience, I've right. done mostly stage work. Um, ah, wait a minute. I see leads here. It says leads, Julia, in the film. Yeah, those were independent film roles, mm -hmm. and um, so I haven't done a whole lot on, um, on okay. the screen. For, what, for the people out there that don't know independent, Film role. What is it? What is this to mean? Um, they're not the big producers. You know, it's not a Paramount film. Uh -huh. or a, you uh -huh. know. Oh, I see. So uh, some of them were um, pr like college productions or uh, recent college graduates. That type of. But still, it's film. just as major as anything else. Like, I mean, anytime you have to get up there it's on the stage and do something, right? yeah, you know, right. you can. It's still difficult. It's hard to put, uh, you know, a, a certain level on the performance of, of that. I mean, no matter where you perform, yeah. you know, it's intense and it's nerve wracking to get up there in front of all these people. Right. You know, yeah. so. <laughs> in, uh, during the audition uh, that uh, we held at the radio station KPFK in the Studio City, um, let me go back a little bit. I put an ad in Ramalog magazine 
and many, many people showed up. Okay. But not, not one of them showed the professional capacity and the, and the, the el corazón <laughs> and this kind of a part. And the, she has that corazón, the, the feelings and all that. Okay, yes, you know, um, I'm sorry to stop you right now, but we are cutting, running down on our time right uh, now, uh, Joseph. So what I wanted to do is uh, tell the people, uh, I thank them for uh, tuning in today and for watching you all here, the uh, cast and the director, producer of the Ivalez, uh, he, the Gary Cooper, the Untold Story. And uh, we're going to say our goodbyes right now, and uh, we'll be, uh, thank you for joining me sure, today, sure, uh, Cristina Morales. And we'll be seeing you next week on Monday at 2.30. Until then, ciao. Hi. Give a hand to all the cast members. All right. Okay, let's. Thank you, buddy. Thank you.